Dear friends, we will be discussing confocal microscopy. Before starting, we should know what is confocal. It means same focus. It is a powerful new tool for in vivo corneal, retinal and optic disc imaging. It provides images with better rejection of out of the focus information than the conventional light microscopy because it obtains high resolution images both perpendicular to the optic axis as well as along the optic axis. Marvin Minsky in 1955 developed the first confocal microscope for studying the neural networks in the living brain. The principle is basically based on Nipco disc which has multiple pinholes. A point light source is focused through a pinhole diaphragm to one point on the object. The reflected light is separated by a beam splitter from the incident light beam path and deflected through a second confocal diaphragm to reach a photosensitive detector. We shall be seeing this principle in action. Light comes from the objective lens and passes through a pinhole and then is reflected on to the beam splitter go on, going on to objective lens on the other side. This is then reflected back onto the beam splitter and again passes through the pinhole towards the detector. The types of confocal are TSCM, HRT3, ConfoScan4. TSCM means Tandem Scanning Confocal Microscopy. In vivo imaging was accomplished from this design, although this is not commercially available. Coming on to HRT3, is a laser scanning confocal microscope. The major difference between HRT3 and TSCM is HRT microscope produces images with excellent resolution and contrast, hence better exit resolution than the TSCM. Coming to ConfoScan 4, it is a variable slit real-time scanning confocal microscope. It can be mounted on a slit lamp stand and using a 12 volt halogen lamp for non-coherent illumination. This is optical cap that can be used for contact imaging. So the procedure is for any contact imaging. A drop of topical anesthetic is placed on the patient's eye and an immersion fluid is applied to the tip of the objective lens to optically couple it to the cornea. So this is then controlled by moving the joystick on the slit lamp microscope and then the Z position of focal plane can be changed using the objective drive control. Hence imaging can be obtained. Coming to the practical applications of corneal imaging. It images a lot of corneal structures which can be seen anatomically as well as understood for pathological basis. Coming to the superficial cells, they have bright cell borders, dark nuclei and polygonal hexagonal shape. So if they undergo desquamation, they reflect high reflective cytoplasm, bright appearing cell nuclei and dark perinuclear spaces which is clearly available. Intermediate cells or the wing cells have bright cell borders, dark cytoplasm, although the cell nucleus is difficult to identify. The wing cells display only minimal variation in terms of size and appearances. Basal cells have brighter cell borders, inhomogeneous cytoplasm, nucleus is also identifying difficult. Coming to practical application in pathologies, this is an example of a superficial punctate keratitis where we can see that the cell clusters are there in basal epithelial layer. Then there are increased Langerhans cells and hyperreflectivity in anterior stroma. Coming to the Bowman's layer, it has amorphous anterior limiting membrane, bearded subbasal plexus, 
and this serves as a landmark if there is any pathology in this layer. Corneal nerves are very important in the imaging. As the stromal nerves are found in close proximity to keratocytes and the deep stroma is devoid of the nerves, this can be visualized on confocal microscope. Anterior stroma has sharply demarcated nuclear borders. One another example is in adenoviral keratoconjunctivitis where we can see hyperreflective inflammatory cells, inflammatory cells in basal epithelium and inflammatory foci in anterior stroma. Posterior stroma has decreased density of keratocyte nuclei. Decimus membrane like Bowman's membrane has amorphous appearance and hence not visualized in healthy subjects. Endothelium consists of a regular pattern of hexagonal reflective cells. A monolayer of regularly arranged hexagonal cells completely covering the posterior surface of the cornea. Clinical applications of this can be in diaphragm or dry spots, epithelial abnormalities, diagnosing corneal dystrophies, acanthamoeba keratitis, studying of the fungal hyphae, refractive corneal surgeries as well as in